Hi, my name is Megan Christian. I'm a member of the European Space Agency Astronaut Reserve, and here at the UK Space Agency, I'm Reserve Astronaut and Exploration Commercialization Lead. Before joining the UK Space Agency, I was living in Italy. I was working at the National Research Council and I was a materials science researcher there. So I was doing a lot of different things innovating new materials for alternative energy above all, but I also spent a year in Antarctica doing research on atmospheric physics and meteorology, so that was climate change research. I've had a bit of a varied research career. I had so many different ideas about my career when I was at school. I think for a while I wanted to be an actor, an artist, an architect, um, but then I think it was around when I was 13 years old or so, I started to realize that I really wanted to go into a kind of scientific career. And at that point, um, I did some work experience at a university in marine biology, uh, which I had a lot of fun with because I actually had a scuba diving license and so I kind of wanted to use that. But then in the end, I shifted a bit more towards chemistry. So in the later years of school, I, I went even more kind of into the sciences and from then uh, I decided to pursue a degree in engineering. But I guess I had a lot of inspiration for those things from my classes that I had at school. Uh, so even in primary school I loved space. Um, I was fascinated by things like black holes and also I had a chance to go to a few different museums. Um, I went to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum and the Kennedy Space Center, both of those in the US and so space has absolutely always fascinated me and in a similar vein also Antarctica. So I went to the National Antarctic Center in New Zealand and both of those things have kind of always remained with me as something that I want to pursue in the future. So specifically, the subjects I chose were um, chemistry and maths. I really loved maths, that was my favorite subject. But I also did some languages uh, because I love learning languages. I think the kind of patterns run through maths and, and languages and also music. So I, I loved all of those things. And so apart from chemistry, a lot of maths and compulsory English subjects, I also studied French and Japanese. After school, I went to the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, doing a Bachelor of Engineering, uh, specifically in Industrial Chemistry. So it was a kind of hybrid science engineering degree. And I chose that one particularly because I had the chance to have this scholarship that would take me to do a few internships. So I did an in internship at Sydney Water for 10 weeks, um, one at Siemens Water Technologies for 10 weeks, and I actually did a whole year internship at Blue Scope Steel, again in Australia. So that really gave me a perspective on what working in the industry would be like. And uh, from there, instead of moving into industry, even though I really enjoyed those internships, I decided to continue with university and I did a, did a PhD again in industrial chemistry. On extracurricular activities, I definitely filled my time with a lot of them. I really loved doing all sorts of extracurricular activities. Um, I kind of continue on from school because when I was at school I did a whole lot of them. One in particular that I really enjoyed was called Future Problem Solving and that kind of set me up for the engineering uh, degree that I did afterwards. When I was at uni I did um, lots of extracurricular activities in terms of um, drama and, and singing because I've always loved singing so I was involved in some university reviews, I was on stage, I was behind the stage uh, doing some stage managing so there was that side and then on the volunteering side I also ran some extracurricular programs myself so I ran the orientation week program welcoming new students to the university and these I continued all throughout my university career I was there for nine years so uh, I kind of filled my extra time with these and it made my time there extra fulfilling. So challenges for women in STEM, it's something that I don't want to have to talk about in 2023 because I think it's something that shouldn't exist anymore because there's so much work that's gone on in the past to give women the rights that we have now. Um, but you know, unfortunately there are still some, some difficulties and I think that starts when we're young because we're kind of funneled into particular areas 
based on even the toys we play with when we're really young. So there is still a bias that women will go more into the art side and men more into the STEM side. But I think that is mixing up a lot more these days. And um, I did, I, I was in the minority. I mean, even in my high school maths class, I was the only female. Um, and I was one of a few in my engineering degree. But I think it's growing now. And I, I hope that when, when you are all adults, then it's not something that we even have to talk about because it would just be completely normal for any woman to do any role. to you is to find what you love and do that because there are a lot of different ways for example if you want to get into the space sector there's not really one exact traditional path that you have to take so find what you love doing do that to the best of your ability and then take opportunities as they come so I've had some really great opportunities along the way going to Antarctica for example and then applying to become an astronaut and you know, I was just brave enough to take those opportunities even though, you know, we all have a little bit of imposter syndrome. We don't necessarily think that we're up to the challenge, but we all really are. And so I would say do your best and do what you love and then take those little opportunities that might take you off your traditional path, but that doesn't matter because they'll give you a new perspective and help you solve some of the world's greatest problems.